Regular meeting of the City Council was held in person Thursday, January 11th, 2024 at 7 o'clock p.m. for the purpose of transacting any and all business. Notice this meeting was posted on January 9th, 2024 at 2.04 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and is live on SATV and Zoom unless technological issues interrupt the transmission. Councilors absent, none. Councilor President Hapworth presided. Councilor Varela moved to dispense with the reading of the previous record. All those in favor? All opposed? The matter carries. President Stott request, oh, President Hapworth requested that, it's okay, we're good. Uh, President Hapworth requested that everyone please rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilor Morsillo. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Salem City Council honors that this land is Namkeg, or fishing place, where generations of Namkeg people from the Pawtucket Band of the Massachusetts Tribe lived and passed through for centuries. We acknowledge this is unceded indigenous land, and also acknowledge the Massachusetts Tribe who continue to honor and hold this land into the present. Salem City Council is committed to having ongoing meaningful dialogue with indigenous peoples who have presence in Salem in order to dismantle the legacies of oppression and inequities that persist today. And thank you to everyone in the room who worked on this land acknowledgement. Public testimony. Public testimony is not to exceed 15 minutes. Public testimony is not a public hearing, a question and answer period. Sign up must occur 30 minutes prior to the meeting. The president shall, depending on the number of speakers, set a time limit not to exceed three minutes, which each individual presenting testimony must abide by. And there's a sign up sheet in the clerk's office and online. We have two people signed up today, so each will have two minutes apiece. The first is Mr. David Pizzanti. David, if you could make your way to the podium. Short then and start with just the one thing, one number one on my agenda. There's a sign downstairs that I have photo photographed multiple times. That's plain and simple illegal. It was declared by the Supreme Court that you cannot prevent someone from using a cell phone within a public building, especially a municipal one. If you don't believe me, please go around the corner and ask the courts who also had to remove that policy. And that anyone, again, I'm not bringing this up to be adversarial, to help educate my fellow Salem citizens to the law of the land. You cannot deny someone this right. Under the First Amendment, it is on the ACLU website, also with instructions on how to sue for this. And that every attempt to enforce it, as a matter of fact, if you order a police officer you should inform them that just following orders doesn't go well in a court of law anymore. It is their job to make sure they know the law they are enforcing. And just because you have ordered them to enforce it doesn't protect them or you. Again, all of these instructions are on the ACLU website. Feel free to look it up. Also, the Supreme Court ruling saying it is illegal for that sign to be there. So I would request, please take it down and stop enforcing an illegal order. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pizzanti. Up next, we have Alphonse Wright. Alphonse, if you want to make your way to the podium. Thank you, Griffin Hapworth. Uh, I'd like to start off by welcoming our new counselors uh, officially. It's the, the first time I've seen you in chambers. Um, I want to, I have three things. I, I want to start with an observation. The observation is that uh, over the, the years that I've been here, I have noticed that those who have been called to serve in this chamber have increasingly uh, followed a trend towards governing through a humanitarian lens. And for that, I applaud all of you. Um, next, I have uh, mentioned an opportunity. Uh, we who have been called to serve, and I include myself in that for various reasons, uh, have the opportunity to continue that trend so that we can serve all the residents of Salem. All the residents of Salem, whether they've lived here for a generation or a day, whether they live on Chestnut Street or in a tent, they are all residents of Salem. We've been called to serve all of them. We need to serve everyone, not, those to, not just those that remind us of our reflections. Lastly, I have an offer. To that end, towards serving through a humanitarian lens, I make myself available, to the council, I'm at your disposal for anything you might need. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. 
And uh, just a note, if anybody left a, uh, a cell phone in the restroom that has been brought up to the, uh, the president's desk here, it's an Android phone on T-Mobile. Hearings. We have an order for Comcast to install conduits at the corner of North Street and Federal Street for service at 36 Federal Street. The petition by Comcast to install conduits on the corner of North and Federal Streets. Anyone appearing in favor, please make your way to the podium or use the raise hand function on Zoom. Good evening, Dave Walling, Comcast, 9 Forbes Road, Woven, Massachusetts. I'd like to speak in favor of the Comcast petition to place uh, 405 feet of one three-inch PVC conduit on Federal Street, including a three-by-three -three manhole for the purpose of providing service to number 36 Federal Street. Anybody else appearing in favor? Any further discussion? Anybody else appearing in opposition? If you're in council chambers, please make your way to the podium, or if you're joining us via Zoom, please use the raise hand function. Please make your way to the podium. This is appearing in favor. Uh, well, neither favor. Sorry, this is appearing in opposition. I, I apologize. Neither opposition nor in favor. I would just like to request, as a person who has now difficulty getting around and understands that particular plight, can we stop letting all of these contractors block the easiest way for me or anyone to get around? We presently have a piece of equipment out here that literally blocks the flattest, smoothest surface in that area. So for me getting Mr. by. Zanti, do you have any um, issues with this, this specific item in front of us right now? All of the items in relation to this. Can this we one, stop letting them block? This, this hearing is about this item specifically. So then when they are allowed to do this, please make sure that their equipment doesn't block access for me, my kind, or anyone. Thank you, Mr. Pizzanti. Any other comments or questions from the body? Councilor Watson felt. Thank you, President Hapworth. I actually do have a, a question for our representative from Comcast. <clears throat> so generally, I'm in support of you all having to do what you have to do, especially when we're getting the courts some better service. Um, that is a tricky uh, intersection, and there's a lot of concerns around pedestrian crossing and the timing and lights and when you can take a right versus a left and all of that. So will this work require any um, blocking of that intersection or changing in traffic patterns? Well, when we apply for the permit, typically the engineering department will tell us if we need to provide a traffic plan. And then we would provide that traffic plan. They would approve it. Once that traffic plan is approved, then they would issue the permit. We would stop the work. So it's all taken into consideration before we stop the work. Okay, that's really helpful to know. And then I'll just work with them to get a heads up on the exact timing. Unless, do you have a time frame already? Well, it's, we're in the winter moratorium right now. Right. So <laughs> it's not going to start probably until April 15th, typically, is when the moratorium ends. So Great. we wouldn't apply for our permit until roughly April 15th. Thanks. We'll just make sure that the folks who, who live in and walk through that area will be well informed. Yes. Thank you. I'm all set, President. Any further discussion? Seeing none, yeah. Councilor Watson felt. Thank you, President Hapworth. I move that we close the public hearing. Council Watson felt moves that we close the public hearing. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor that we close the public hearing? All opposed? The, the public hearing is closed. Councilor Watson felt. Thank you, President Hapworth. I further move that this be granted. Councilor Watson felt moves this be granted. Any further discussion? Seeing none. For Council Watsonfeld's motion to grant the petition by Comcast to install conduits on the corner of North and Federal Streets. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Appointments and reappointments. We have held from the last meeting the mayor's reappointments of the following with their names, board, term length, and term expirations. Council Varela. Thank you, President Stott. I would like to uh, move for comfort. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Apologies. Thank you, President Hapworth. <laughs> I'd like to make a uh, dictum move for confirmation for roll call vote. Council Varela moves for confirmation by roll call vote under discussion. Thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, I'd just like to thank all of the appointments uh, for their continued work on our boards. Uh, we appreciate what they do. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councilor Cohen. Thank you, President Hapworth. Um, although I think all these people have done great work and really excited that they're going to be reappointed. I, I want to specifically point out 
uh, the three commissioners for the Commission on Disabilities did really terrific work this summer on the um, outdoor dining project. Uh, Rosa Radaz, who brings a really great perspective to the zoning board, and DJ Joyce, who has a, a, another very unique perspective on historical restoration. And so I think his presence on that uh, commission is really great. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councilor Watson felt. Thank you, President Hapworth. I would like to further support um, VJ Joyce's reappointment specifically. Um, VJ Joyce, as a professional historian, is employed in the city of Salem, um, has served on a number of local nonprofits, particular to the history and preservation in Salem. Um, and I believe that the seat that he fills on the commission may also be representative of um, of sort of historic Salem and other nonprofit engagement. So um, it's important that um, that he can get to continue to do his work. And I'm I'm really grateful for the work that he does and the perspective he brings. And I just, I just wanted to voice my support. Thanks. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the mayor's reappointment of the 11 listed, uh, Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Cohen? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Harvey? Yes. Councilor Jerslow? Yes. Yes. Councilor Merkel? Yes. Councilor Marcello? Yes. Councilor Prasnuski? Yes. Councilor Stott? Yes. Councilor Varela? Yes. Councilor Watsonfelt? Yes. And Councilor Hapworth? Yes. On the mayor's reappointment of those listed, we have 11 members voting, 11 in favor, and none opposed. The matter carries. Further appointments and reappointments. We have the mayor's appointment of the following with terms to expire. Timothy Norton on the Scholarship and Education Committee to expire on March 28, 2025. And Margarita Rocca Con Gonzalez, Historical Commission, January 11, 2026. Conclave, sorry. Councilor Varela. Thank you, President Hapworth. I'd like for these to be held under the rules. Councilor Varela moves these be held under the rules. All in favor? All opposed? The matter carries. Further appointments and reappointments. With the mayor's reappointment of the following one, two, three, five people to Affordable Housing Trust from Board, Council on Aging, and Public Art Commission with various terms to expire. Councilor Varela. Thank you, President Hapworth. Move that these be held under the rules. Councilor Varela moves these be held under the rules. All in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Communications from the mayor. We've in order that the sum of $30,000 is hereby transferred and appropriated from the receipts reserved funds listed below to the Department of Public Services burial account. Councillor Merkel. Thank you, President Hapworth. I move for suspension of the rules. Councilor Merkel moves to suspend the rules. Any objection? Seeing none. Councilor Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, I move for adoption. Council Merkel moves for adoption under discussion. Uh, thank you. This is a standard uh, transfer of funds. People pay into these funds uh, through the sale of burial lots and vaults uh, until the funds are requested by DPS uh, to be used for burial services and daily operations for Greenlawn Cemetery to continue. Uh, the request was made by uh, Ray uh, Jordan, of, uh, the Director of Public Services. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On uh, the motion by Councilor Merkel, the sum of $30,000 be transferred and appropriated from the receipts reserved funds listed below to the Department of Public Services burial count. All in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Further communications from the mayor. We've in order that the sum of $10,134.14 is hereby appropriated from the fund balance reserved for free cash account to the account listed below fire department fire equipment repair fund to, um, for emergency repair costs. Council Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. I move for a suspension of the rules. Council Merkel moves to suspend the rules. Any objection? Seeing none. Council Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, I move for adoption. Council Merkel moves that the sum of $10,134.14 is hereby appropriated from the fund balance reserved for appropriation free cash under discussion. Uh, thank you. This and the next order are a two-step process uh, to pay for an emergency repair that was made um, to a fire ladder truck. 
Uh, this matter is uh, being taken up first to transfer the funds in order to take up the following matter to pay for the repairs. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the motion that the sum of $10,134.14 be hereby appropriated from the fund balance reserved for appropriation free cash, all in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Somebody's phone is ringing up here. Is it that one? Is it the person? <laughs> uh, whoever's phone that is, Charles is calling you. <laughs> Maybe. Um, <laughs> further communications from the mayor. We have an order that per master in the law, chapter 44, section 64, to pay for um, last year's fiscal 23 invoice with fiscal year 24 expense account for the fire department in the amount of $10,134.14. Councilor Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, I move for suspension of the rules. Council Merkel moves to suspend the rules. Any objection? Seeing none. Council Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. I move for adoption by roll call vote. Council Merkel moves that the sum of $10,134.14 of outstanding FY23 invoices be hereby allowed to be paid for the FY24 fire department budget as listed below. Under discussion. Uh, thank you. Uh, the fire department ladder truck had a severe breakdown in June and had to be towed to Allegiance um, Trucks in Methuen for emergency repairs to to be made, uh, in which they gratefully uh, did very promptly. Um, the invoice was not received promptly. It was not received until October. And then Chief Dion uh, had questions about the bill, uh, which f delayed it even further. Uh, so now the, uh, now the invoice is in front of us and um, needs to be paid. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On Council Merkel's order that the sum of $10,134.14 of outstanding FY23 invoices be hereby allowed to be paid from the FY24 Fire Department budget as listed below. All in favor? All oh, roll call vote, I'm sorry. Roll call. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cohen? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Harvey? Yes. Councilor Jerslow? Yes. Councilor Merkel? Yes. Councilor Marcillo? Yes. Councilor Prosniewski? Yes. Council Stott? Yes. Council Varela? Yes. Council Watson Felt? Yes. And Council Hapworth? Yes. For the MGL, Chapter 44, Section 64, pay an outstanding FY23 invoice with FY24 budget in the, in the amount of $10,134.14 for the fire department repair of fire truck. We have 11 members voting, 11 in the affirmative. The matter carries. Further communications from the mayor. We've in order to accept the donation of $1,200 from Miracle Auctioneer Services. The donation is to be deposited into the Parks and Rec Donation Fund. Councilor Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. I move for adoption. Councilor Merkel moves for adoption of the acceptance of the donation of $1,200 from the, I believe it's the American Auctioneer Services, uh, under discussion. Thank you. I uh, just want to say thank you to the America uh, Auctioneer's Services for their donation. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On Council Merkel's motion that the, for the, acceptance of the, the adoption of the acceptance of the donation of $1,200 from the American Auctioneers Association, all in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. And thank you to the American Auctioneer's Services, whoever you are. Um, Communications from the mayor. Further communications from the mayor. We have an order for a home rule petition for an act amending chapter 250 of the acts of 2016 to include the city of Salem designated port area as part of the Salem Harbor port area. Councilor Jerslow. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, after I move to, ad no, let's see. I move to adoption by roll call vote. Yeah, so uh, Council Jerusalem moves for adoption by roll call vote under discussion. Thank you, Mr. President. After speaking with Council McCarthy and Harbor Master McHugh regarding this matter, my understanding of this bill is to amend Chapter 250 of the Acts of two, 2016 is to change the wording to include the DPA designated port area 
as part of the Salem Harbor Port area. When it was originally enacted, it only included the Blaney Street Wharf area. And since tonight we have Harbor Master McHugh in the audience, um, I was wondering if we can suspend the rules and let him speak on this matter. Council Jerusalem moves to suspend the rules. Seeing no objection, Mr. McHugh. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for those of you who don't know me, Bill McHugh, uh, Harbor Master for the City, uh, Port Director and FSO. Um, I was involved with the original um, drafting of language to, um, for this legislative act to create the Port Authority. And the original intent was to include all uh, area that would host commercial activities, commercial marine activities. And the current language falls short of that. Um, it, it, when you read it, um, I guess you could interpret it in many different ways because it does go back to the harbor port area, but it does concentrate heavily on Blaney Street. So it's a concern right now as we move forward with the different leases, wharfing rights agreements, and so on and so forth, that um, it doesn't define the entire port designated port area the way it should. Uh, this uh, home rule petition will alleviate that. Um, and it's important that we get this to Beacon Hill because things are progressing quickly um, and we want to make sure that we have the continuity and the jurisdiction in the right place to give proper oversight during port marine port operations. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. McHugh. Any further questions for Mr. McHugh? Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on the motion by Council Jerzlow that an act amending Chapter 250 of the Acts of 2016 to include the City of Salem designated port area as part of the Salem Harbor port area be adopted. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cohen? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Harvey? Yes. Councilor Jerzlow? Yes. Councilor Merkel? Yes. Councilor Marcillo? Yes. Councilor Prosnuski? Yes. Councilor Stott? Yes. Council Varela? Yes. Council Watson Felt? Yes. And Council Hapworth? Yes. A motion by Council Jerzlow that an act amending Chapter 250 of the Acts of 2016 to include the City of Salem designated port area as part of the Salem Port Harbor Port area be adopted. We have 11 councilors voting, 11 in favor, none opposed. The matter carries. Mayor's informational page, none. Motions, orders, and resolutions. Councilor Varela. Thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, city of Salem and City Council, January 1st, 2024, ordered that the Committee on Government Services, co posted with the Committee of a Whole, meet to discuss the creation of an Elections Commission and the process involved. Councilor Varela moves that the Committee on Government Services, co posted with the Committee of the Whole, meet to discuss the creation of an Election Commission and the process involved. Under discussion. Thank you, President Hapworth. I'll keep it brief. Uh, looking forward to this conversation. I believe that uh, it is time we look into forming possibly our own department when it comes to elections. Not only will this help with the efficiency uh, with our city government, uh, it'll also uh, create a little more transparency in how we. Uh, uh, not only vote, but who controls uh, the conversation. So with that, looking forward to uh, really engaging with our community about how we can address this. Um, and uh, there's a long way to go. Uh, this would be a charter change, which would require a special act from the legislature. So um, looking forward to the conversation again. Thank you so much. Any further discussion? Councilor, Councilor Morcello. Thank you, President. Um, so I, I have had a discussion with Councilor Varel about this. We have been talking about how to move forward with this <clears throat> election commission. Um, it is something that, by the way, the city clerk is in favor of, so I want to make sure everyone is aware of that. Um, so my only thought, and I'm open to a little bit of discussion here, if people don't mind, um, is that since this is a change in the way um, the elections are being, would, would be controlled, I guess, um, whether the committee or whether the council would be in favor of sending this to the committee of the whole so that all counselors have full discussion powers. It's, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Councilor Cohen. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. 
Um, I was on a working group about seven, eight years ago. Uh, Shimona Vish and uh, Scott Sternberg and others, uh, Lucy Gachado, Anununcio, myself and some other people were on it. And I'm really looking forward to this happening. Um, I personally think government services would be an appropriate place. We all have a right to discuss it. And then if it gets referred to the full council, we'll all be able to vote on it. So just my opinion. Councilor Davis. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. I would like to uh, support the order as it's written. Um, I think that it would be uh, wise to see it move as efficiently as possible. Um, I think that, um, you know, with the goal in mind that we can hopefully implement some of these changes um, for the next election, election cycle. Um, so that's, that's what I would like to see uh, to support. Councilor Stott. Thank you, President Hepworth. Um, I would like to, uh, I'm very excited to see this order. Um, I think if anybody loves to talk about elections, it's definitely myself. I have a story. Um, so, and I, I know also know that the city clerk is in support of this, and I think that this just makes a lot of sense, especially since the pandemic and the changes that have happened um, in regards to elections and the responsibilities that fall um, on the city handling those. It, just things have changed so drastically in the past few years. Um, not being a member of government services, I also would support having this go to a committee of the whole conversation. Um, I don't think this is something that needs to be rushed. If this is a charter change, this is something that needs to have a full conversation. Um, I wouldn't want to have it go back to council and then have to go to like back to another committee to have a, another conversation or vote. Um, since it is co-posted, co you do have the ability to be included in the conversation as a counselor, but you can't make motions, you can't really, you don't, you know, have a vote on that committee. So I, I do think that a, a committee of the whole might be more appropriate, but um, either way, I will say I'm in support of the Elections Commission itself. Further discussion? Councilor Prosniewski. Thank you, President Hapworth. Other cities and towns have done this. They have separate election divisions. I just want the public to know that we're not trying to do something unique, but we are going to um, compartmentalize uh, the responsibilities of something that's very important, and I think it's going to make it a lot easier um, on, um, on the staff and um, more fair in the election process. Um, I, too, am in support of having it as a committee of the whole because, as Councilor Stott said, we can all participate, we can all make motions. We can, this is an important matter that should be, uh, should be addressed as, as a uh, committee of the whole. So I would support this going, um, not that it makes really any much difference, uh, except that everybody has a little bit more to say uh, in it. So I, too, and hats off to you for bringing it forward. Um, Councilor Varela, thank you. It sounds like we have obviously some broad support. The, uh, r the motion on the floor right now is to send this to government services. Um, so, Councilor Varela, are you looking to change your motion or you want to keep your motion as is? Thank you, President Hapworth. I would like to keep the motion as is. I do agree that, you know, committee of the whole is important. However, this is co-posted. So most of the, all the counselors are going to have a, an opportunity to get their answers questioned with a possible referral to the full council. So the reason I'm a little hesitant about putting it forward to the committee of the whole is as the chair of government services, I do plan on being uh, attentive to really making sure this conversation happens in a respectful fashion and that's the reason I want to see this happen I want to see it happen uh, sooner than later and um, but if it's the will of the body to put into committee of a whole so be it however I think that uh, it's a completely appropriate to continue on with government services with the committee of a whole thank you any further discussion Councilor Stott. Thank you, President Hapworth. I know this is my second time. I just wanted to make kind of a logistical note because we just recently created the Committee of the Whole. And was it last year, though? Or the, so for the past two years was the first time that we, or maybe last year was the first year? Two, so we've had it for two years. Anyway, I digress slightly. Um, the Committee of the Whole chair does not necessarily default to the President of the Council. Anybody can chair a Committee of the Whole meeting. So like, for example, Councilor Merkel last year chaired a Committee of the Whole meeting about Destination Salem. So I wouldn't have that be a matter 
you know, you can still definitely take it up as, as so be it if it, you know, designated as a chair of that meeting. I just wanted to make that note. Council Watsonfeld. Thanks, President Hapworth. I, I, too, am willing to go with whatever the will of the body is here, but it seems a little bit like we're drowning in semantics. Um, the Government Services Committee, by and large, its key function is to have exactly these conversations. <laughs> and if we're co-posted, you know, it, it, it seems aligned with the mission. We're co-posted. It seems like there's broad support amongst the counselors, even asking for a committee of the whole um, meeting. So I'm not sure what gets aired differently. Like, I, like I, I feel like if it were a little bit more contentious or it felt like there was not quite broad support for this or the city clerk, Madam City Clerk, didn't support necessarily, then perhaps it makes sense for the committee to hold to come together to debate. Um, that having been said, it doesn't feel, I, I, I'm not feeling like, it, it, like it's an imperative in this instance. I'm perfectly happy to support this going to government services, co-posted as the order is currently written everyone getting their answers, their questions answered, and then coming back to the council for, for you know, what I'm sure will be a, a lively conversation, but does not feel like a contentious debate. Thanks. Council Merkel. Uh, thank you, President um, Hapworth. Uh, I also support the Elections Commission uh, and um, this, uh, the idea of this moving forward. And um, I, I understand both points that, that are being made, uh, but uh, so I'm, I'm comfortable either way, uh, but I do see it as a government services issue. So if it is the will of the body to go with this moving to committee of the whole, I would want to see um, Councillor Varela being the chair of government services, which this def definitely would fall under um, chairing the meetings. Councillor Harvey. I also agree with uh, Councillor Varela, um, Varela, I should say, I'm sorry. Um, keeping it in the committee of the government um, services at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? So on the, on the motion by Councilor Varela to move uh, the Committee for the Government Services, uh, co-post with the Committee of the Whole to meet to discuss the creation of an election commission and the process involved. Uh, Madam City Clerk, can we, can we call a roll call here? We wanna do hand vote. All those in favor? All opposed? The matter carries. Any further motions, orders, or resolutions? Seeing none. Committee reports, Councilor Morsillo. Thank you, President. City of Salem and City Council, January 11th, 2024. Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. To whom was referred the matter of granting of certain licenses, sea worms, for Paul Lynch, Timothy Lynch, Jose Mercado, and Joe Mendonca, and a secondhand clothing license for Boston Street Resale, has considered said matter and would recommend that it be granted. On acceptance of the report, all in favor? All opposed? Report is accepted. On adoption of recommendation under discussion? Um, no, no real discussion. Any further discussion on sea worms? Seeing none. Um, on uh, uh, all in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Councilors, uh, further committee reports, Councilor Stott. Thank you, President Hopper, City of Salem and City Council, January 11, 2024. The Committee on Community and Economic Development co-posted with the Committee of the Whole to whom was referred the matter of meeting with the Planning Department and the CIU unit to discuss single room occupancy has considered said matter and would recommend the matter be discharged from committee with no action. On acceptance of the report, all those in favor? All opposed? Report is accepted. Adoption of the recommendation under discussion. Thank you, President Hopworth. Um, so we just met on this. It was our, our first meeting of the year. Um, got through three matters quite quickly. Um, but there was a recap on this um, single room occupancy item that was brought in last year. It was noted um, in the mayor's speech during inauguration, as well as at our uh, retreat this past weekend. The topic came up, and the um, 
the the willingness. I don't think that's the right word. That the the mayor is focusing on it in the upcoming year as a housing priority for 2024. Uh, last night in the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board, it was a topic that came up as well, where they are also discussing the matter. Um, the planning department is taking this up kind of in house versus using a consultant to do research and discussion. They will be housing community forums. Again, um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund will be used as part of the public conversation there, as well as the Council on Aging. There were there were three or four. Uh, other groups that were commented or noted from the planning department that will be included in the public conversations in the upcoming year on the single room occupancy topic. As the topic that was in committee was kind of um, just abroad, I think it was a matter to get the conversation started and get the conversation going, which we are there now. The conversation is started and going, but right now the, it's a city-led effort. Um, so I believe that um, we will see movement from that, something submitted back to the council, hopefully before before the end of this year, we're, we're hoping for the fall. Um, and then when that is submitted back to council, it will most likely probably go to committee for further discussion once we have um, some papers in front of us. So that was why the matter was uh, requested to be discharged from committee with no action, with hopefully action later this year. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the motion that the matter be discharged, all those in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Further committee reports. Councilor Stott. City of Salem and City Council, January 11, 2024. The Committee on Economic Development co-posted with the Committee of the Whole, to whom was referred the matter of creating a zoning overlay district relative to food trucks and temporary food vendors, has considered said matter and would recommend the matter be discharged with no action. On acceptance of the report, all those in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Uh, adoption recommendation under discussion. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so again, we just met on this topic. There was not, um, we don't have a lot of detail yet other than we are, um, there are members of the council who are interested in creating an avenue for um, food service vehicles, temporary food vendors to serve the city of Salem. Um, the pathway to get there, whether it's a zoning overlay or district or uh, ordinance change or a policy or program hasn't quite been ironed out yet. So that will be worked on once there is something to review and put in front of the committee. Then and that will be resubmitted again, and I'm definitely looking forward to that conversation. Any further discussion? Councilor Varela. Thank you, President Hepworth, and thank you, uh, Councilor Stott, for this. Um, just to let everyone know that this is an ongoing conversation. Right now, uh, the city solicitor and I are trying to figure out language with the RFP, and it was the recommendation of Councilor Stott to kind of frame, if we do codify this in ordinance, somewhat how we did with the, uh, out, uh, the outdoor dining ordinance as well, where we do have a little bit of an umbrella of a codified ordinance, but mostly the flexibility with it be within being with it a policy. So with that, um, I'm looking to hopefully have some answers in mid-February with us so we can move forward. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the motion that the matter be discharged, all those in favor? All opposed? The matter carries. Further committee reports. Councilor Stott. City of Salem and City Council, January 11, 2024. The Committee on Community and Economic Development co-posted with the Committee of the Whole, to whom was referred the matter of Haunted Happenings 2023. Issues and debriefing has considered said matter and would recommend the matter remain in committee. On acceptance of the report, all those in favor? All opposed? Report is accepted. Adoption of the recommendation under discussion. Thank you, Mr. President. So surprisingly, we did not discuss all of Haunted Happenings 2023 in the 30-minute meeting we had before this council meeting. Um, that is a much larger organizational effort that will, it's already started to take place. So we talked about how that that will be at the Community Life Center, similar to last year. Um, we have the recording available to last year's meeting as well as the presentation. I've started to reach out to the um, applicable attendees that we're looking for information from. Anna Friedman, the finance director, will have the revenues and expenses available by the end of January. So a doodle poll should be in your inboxes soon for meeting dates for that in February. Any further discussion? Councilor watson -Felt. Thank you. Just to reiterate for the public who are chomping at the bit to have this uh, meeting, uh, specifically the Ward 2 residents, is it correct, just a point of clarification, you're aiming for early February. That's the goal, Fe February period. Okay, so that's great. Then I've, I've already received multiple texts and emails tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Councillor Stott. And I'm looking forward to that important conversation. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the motion that the matter remain in committee, all those in favor, all opposed, the matter carries. Communication from city officials, none. 
Petitions. We have a petition from National Grid and Verizon to install one jointly owned pole 400 feet northeast of the center line of the intersection of Pope and Proctor Street. Hearing order, January 25th, 2024. Further petitions. Petition from National Grid and Verizon to install one jointly owned pole 142 feet west of the central line of the intersection of Harper Street and Congress Street. Hearing order January 25th, 2024. Further petitions. We have a list of public guides. Long list. Long list. <laughs> Councilor Morcello. Thank you, President. I move that these be granted. Councilor Morcello moves these be granted. All in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Further petitions. We have three secondhand valuable license applications for Tobley's jewelry, glass, and etc. and old Nom Keg antiques. Council Morcillo. Thank you, President. I move that these be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. Council Morcillo moves these be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. All in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Further petitions. We have six claims. Council Morcillo. Thank you, President. I move that these be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. Council Morcillo moves these be referred to the Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs. All those in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Further petitions. We have eight drain lay a contract to operate a license applications. Council Morcillo. Thank you, President. I move that these be granted. Council Morcillo moves these be granted. All those in favor? All opposed? Matter carries. Unfinished business. Councillor Stott. We have a second passage of an ordinance amending a traffic ordinance, Chapter 42, Section 50B, Handicap Park in um, Beaver Street. Councillor Stott. Thank you, President Hepworth. I move for adoption for second and final passage. Councillor Stott moves for adoption for second and final passage under discussion. No discussion. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On the adoption of the second and final passage of an ordinance amending a traffic ordinance, Chapter 42, Section 50B, Handicap Parking, Beaver Street. All those in favor? All opposed? The matter carries. Any further business? Seeing none. Councillor Prosniewski. Thank you. Can I have a matter of personal privilege, please, to be brought forward? Um, I'd like to uh, congratulate you on your first meeting as president uh, and uh, doing it so efficiently and quickly and uh, in a very polite manner. Uh, very, very well done. I think the whole council would agree that uh, you stepped right up to the plate and hit a home run. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I am trying to go for a uh, councilor, um, Councilor Medora's record here. And I think we're pretty close right now. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything further? Councilor Merkel. Thank you for the moment of uh, personal privilege. And I also want to welcome the new councilors. Um, it's, um, it, we're going to have a great year, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Anything further? Councilor Prosniewski. Make a motion to adjourn. Councilor Prosniewski makes a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? All opposed? We're adjourned. Have a good night.